Hi, I'm Patty, and today I'm gonna to show you how easy it is to embroider a baby bib. So if you're somebody who's new to embroidery, this is a great starter project. There's all types of bibs out there on the market that you can easily purchase and come home and embroider with your baby lock embroidery machine. I've got some sample of different types of baby bibs. You can go to your local store and find packets of bibs that come in a variety of colors. There's also some that are just terry cloth that maybe have a little trim on them. And then there's even bibs that almost look like a little towel with a little neckline on them that are really fun and, and really help when the baby's being really messy, right? So those are all different types of baby bibs that you can use. Now, what I'm gonna show you today, you could also do on a burp cloth. And those are something that I love to give to my friends as baby gifts. So burp cloths are basically just diapers. So you can go to your local store, buy a bag of just the cloth diapers. I like to launder them. And then again, these are great to be able to just add a name or a monogram and then embellish them with different types of ribbon or trims. So those are another option. So today I've gone ahead and hooped one of the bibs. So I picked one of those bright colorful bibs. I found the center of my bib or where I wanted to place my name because we're just gonna embroider this with a name and a little bit of some little flowers on it. And I went ahead and I hooped this into my four by four hoop. Okay, so we're gonna be showing you and demonstrating today on the Baby Lock Flare, but any of our Baby Lock machines will be able to accommodate a four by four hoop. So you can find a design similar to the design I'm gonna show you today and stitch that out on your machine. I've gone ahead and hooped this and I'm using just a simple um, Baby Lock tearaway stabilizer. So I went ahead and I first layered the stabilizer underneath my bib and then I hooped it, but I, you may also notice that I have this kind of clear topping on top of my bib. Because I'm using a terry cloth bib that's got a little bit of fibers to it, I wanna use a water soluble topping that's gonna to help me to keep my stitches in place after they're stitched out. So they're not gonna get lost in all of the fibers of the terry cloth bib. Then what I did is I went ahead and I put some straight pins to mark that center position on top of my water soluble topping. You could also try using a marking pen or something like that, but this just not only helps me secure that topping in place, but it also gives me a really good visual for where I need to center my design. So over here at the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and just put in a name and then I'm also gonna add some cute little floral elements to the design. So one thing that I love about the flare is that I know I'm using my four x four hoop. I can come into my settings on the machine and here on the first page of my settings, I can say, I wanna use my four x four hoop and navigate to that four x four embroidery frame. And you'll see it's now giving me a little box that's gonna represent the design size or my hoop size on my embroidery frame. I also have this embroidery frame identification view option and I can turn that on. What that will do is it's gonna only show me designs that would fit in that four by four hoop. So it's gonna gray out any other designs that I'm looking at as I'm trying to select a design for my bib or for any of my projects and just limit me to this, the designs that will fit in that embroidery field. I can simply touch okay to get out of my settings and now I'm back at the main page. So to, for this bib, I'm gonna go into my built-in fonts, select a font, and you can choose whichever font you like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select my first letter of the name, and down here at the bottom, I have some options. I have large, medium, and small. And I'm gonna go ahead and select medium, just because I'm gonna see if that fits my hoop. I'm thinking I'm using a smaller hoop size. To navigate to these lowercase letters, I use these selection arrows here on the face of the machine and go ahead and I type in the name and I'm gonna type the name in Heidi because my friend Stephanie just had a little baby girl named Heidi. So we're gonna put that on the bib. Once I have my name in place, I simply set and now it's brought over to my embroidery page. Now you can see this is my four by four field and I might say that's a little small. I can come into my size and resize this and make it larger. So I can either size it proportionately larger or smaller or I can stretch it using all of these preset keys here. I think that looks pretty good and I can say okay. So now that I've got my name in, I wanna add some other design elements. So up here on the flare, I have this exclusive category. I can find additional designs by either going into the exclusive category or I can also look in the second category designs here as well and see what designs I have available. Now I kind of did a little selection before we started taping and I wanna use a design that is actually an element that coordinates with some of the large lettering built into the flare. So when I select my large letters, you're gonna see there's two different lettering styles. This second style 
actually has some little flowers that are, again, coordinating with those large letters. See how those boxes are all grayed out for my A, B, C, D? That's because I turned that embroidery frame identification view on. So that's letting me know only the designs that are gonna fit in my four by four hoop. So I'm gonna still use my arrows here to kind of navigate down through all of the different letters. And right here, this design number 30 is the design I'm gonna choose. And you'll see it just brings it right into the center of my page and I'm simply gonna set that onto my design page and then I can move that and I can either move it by touching on the screen or just use these little move arrows here and kind of move it and place it around the name to where I position it where I kind of think it would look good. All right, I'm gonna to touch okay. Now I want a second flower. I like to kind of have things balanced when I'm creating something like this. So I have to go back and add, go back to find that same design. Again, I can arrow through, I believe it was design number 30. There it is, select that and again set right in the middle of my design. So again, I can either use my finger on this touch screen and move that over and fine tune it using the move keys. Okay, so get those positioned where you want them to go. Now, if I wanna select between the designs, maybe I wanna move that other design, I can use my selection key there. And then I could move that design and kind of position that where I would like it to go. Now, the other thing I can do is, these are both going in the same direction. Maybe I don't want that. So let me just select back to this other flower. And I also have the option to mirror that. Okay, so then it just looks a little bit more symmetrical on my embroidery design. At this point, I could go in and change the color of my name if I wanted to so that it coordinates with one of my other colors. So let me select that, touch my color key, and I could come in here and make that be a color pink or choose a color so I can visually see what that's gonna look like on my project. Touch okay, and then edit end when I'm done with all my editing. At this point, I have a few options. What I'm gonna first do is before I can use my trace or anything like that, I need to have my hoop on the machine. So let me go ahead and attach that to the embroidery arm. Just slide in my hoop. And then once it's inserted, go ahead and latch that down. Now you'll notice that my pins are not lining up with where my needle position is. So I wanna use the move keys over here on the screen to kind of move that needle position so it can be right over where my pins are. So you may have noticed as I was moving the needle position, the machine started beeping and my needle stopped moving. So basically I had my design and my design is now as far down as it can go using my four by four hoop. So what are my options? How do I fix this? Cause this is reality. You have a couple options. You can take this and go back and re-hoop your bib and maybe move that up so that the needle positions are a little bit further up. Or looking at my screen here, I can see that I could probably manipulate my design a little bit and get it positioned so that I have a little bit more wiggle room to get that design onto my bib. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is use this return key here on the face of the machine and go back to my embroidery editing screen. And I can use those selection tools again to select those flowers. And I'm gonna move those flowers a little closer. I'm gonna go ahead and select the other flower. And this is the one I think when me moving it is gonna make a big enough of an adjustment. Move that up closer. And I could even actually move it so that it's just to the left of the H, okay? Touch okay. And now I'll touch edit end again and go back in and see if I can't move it down a little further. So again, I'll use my move keys. And that's pretty close. I'm gonna move it over here. And because this is a bib and I'm not, it isn't particular, I'm not trying to line it up on a specific line, I'm okay with where it's at right now. So I've got it lined up with my pins and at this point, I could begin to sew. But one of the things I wanna mention is if you're using pins when you're doing embroidery, it's really important that you make sure, make sure, make sure that you remove those pins before you start doing any stitching. But I have one extra tool on my Baby Lock Flare that's gonna even help me with the number of thread changes that I'm gonna have on this design. Because I have two of those flowers that are exactly the same and I just brought them in and one is mirrored from the other one, I can come in here and choose this button here that's got two blue spools and a red spool. What that's gonna do is it's gonna color sort my design. So now when I touch embroidery, what you'll see is that the machine is going to take similar colors as long as the designs are not overlapping designs and it's gonna color sort them. So you can kind of see that right here where now the deep rose is actually showing me the name Heidi and then the leaf green will be the beginning of my flowers. So it's combining those colors together. So again, it just requires less thread changes for me, which means that my embroidery is gonna go faster. So at this point, everything is positioned where I want it to go. 
I just need to remove the pins, re-thread my machine for the first color, which is the deep rose, and I'm ready to begin stitching. So now that I'm done stitching out the name Heidi, I'm just gonna change out my color to the green and continue on through the rest of my flowers. So now my embroidery is all done and the machine is even telling me on the screen that I'm finished embroidering. Simply touch OK and it'll bring you back to your main screen. Now, next up, what all you need to do is just simply take the hoop out of the machine. And what I like to do is take a little snips and just kind of trim up some of these little extra threads that I might have here. Take this out of your hoop and then you'll want to tear away any of this water soluble topping and then try to just get the little insides of letters and things like that. Sometimes I'll take a little uh, damp washcloth and just kind of get in there or spritz some water on it. And then you want to gently tear away any of this excess tear away stabilizer on the back and then you're good to go and you've got your great embroidered baby bib. Thanks for watching and to find more inspiration, check out babylock.com.